Hey there, Tim Lake. Uh, welcome to church. Uh, my name is Cor Doss. And I am Libby. Yeah, so we're on campus kind of right now. Um, the staff is kind of slowly working their way back on campus and CDC open, right? Child Development Center is back. We're in week number two. Yeah. So you might hear some voices running up and down the hallway here, but it's uh, getting really exciting as campus starts to slowly and safely reopen. Yeah, it's exciting. So, are you new to Timberlake? Is this one of your first times joining us? Or maybe you haven't had a chance to visit us uh, in person, but we're thankful to have you here online. So, we want to be able to connect with you this morning. Yes, yeah, so we have a free gift um, that we really would like to give to you. Um, all you have to do, there's a link in the comment section and in the post. Uh, it says connect card. Throw that out. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll send you the free gift and we'll be able to connect with you and help you get to know us at Timberlake a little more. So, this week we are closing out our series, Life in the Wilderness. Yeah, so we've gone through the book of Exodus um, this whole month, and um, it's been really incredible to see how this Old Testament book really is tied into where we are in our current reality right now. Um, so yeah, go back, go to the website. You can listen back to the, the series for the last three weeks. Um, yeah, Pastor Brad's going to close us out this morning. So yeah, so uh, we are sad that VBS uh, in person has been canceled. Um, but that means we get to do VBS online this year. Uh, so we're excited about that. Tell us a little bit more about it. So we are gonna pioneer through uh, a virtual VBS here at Timberlake. Uh, and if you've been here in the past for VBS, you know that VBS is huge and awesome and so fun. And we're gonna try to take that into a virtual setting uh, starting the first week of August. Yeah. Um, you should be on the lookout for an email uh, tomorrow from uh, Ms. Erin and our communications team letting you know more information about how to sign up and get your information for virtual VBS. Uh, that information will also be posted on all of our Timberlake communications as well. So I uh, hope you get excited and ready to join us for our first ever virtual VBS. Yeah, so we know that, you know, social media and Facebook, you get a lot of stuff. There's some good stuff, there's some bad stuff. One of my favorite places to go on social media is our Facebook group. What's the name of it? Timberlake Church, an online community. Yeah, what do you like about it? I love that people can just post and comment away, and it's all people that you're seeing here in the building on Sunday morning um, when we're able to be together, and we're able just to chat. You can lift up prayer requests, you can talk about um, different needs, you can share jokes. Uh, yes. Different little just fun commenting posts. Uh, the most recent was uh, the what would you do? Uh, was it March eighth? Was there? Yeah. So he, yeah, the last post that we posted uh, today when we recorded this is uh, what was if you knew that March eighth was the last Sunday you would be in the building for church. What would, what, you, do? What would you do differently? So, yeah. yeah. Lots of fun things uh, to talk about and do uh, in the Timberlake online community, um, and we just hope that you'll join that and have fun and visit with others here in our church. Um, in a virtual way. Yeah. It's in the link. All right, so it's a party. It is digital community time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so comment, right? Yeah, we want to comment, and but we want you to say, like, who's watching with you? Yeah. Is it Cora, Libby? You know, Libby, are the kids still in bed? You know. About your pets? Your pets. Your fish. Yeah. yeah, do you have your <laughs> breakfast with you? Like, if you give your breakfast, like, a name, you could do that. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, digital community time. What are you doing this morning? Yeah. So, tell us. Comment below, who's watching with you? So yeah, thanks again for joining us online. We're gonna send it to the countdown. Um, we can see some scrolling announcements and stuff, but what do we want to do in the meantime? Make sure you're sharing, getting everybody ready for watching the service, and get ready and join, to join us for worship. Okay. See you soon. Best ways you can like help spread the gospel right now in this online community is by sharing the stream, right? And Gotta share. You so somewhere here on your feed, you have a little share button. Hit share. Tell your friends uh, to join us for church this morning. Even if they're not watching it right now, they might catch up and watch it later. So it's super important uh, to share the stream and invite others to join in the message here at Timberlake.
going to tell you one of my favorite things about this quarantine time has been the opportunity it has opened up for me to exercise. I'm now exercising six days a week, one day a week for rest. Um, and I want to encourage you to get going, to get moving. And if you're already moving, to, to keep doing it. Um, it is so good and so important for us to take care of our bodies. Uh, friends, you know, God made us and we only get one body in this life. And as we get older, uh, it starts to wear down and wear out. So we need to take care of it. Yeah, and I'm Cord. Um, thanks again for joining us online at Timberlake. Um, we're going to start our service shortly. Um, you're going to experience a time of prayer, scripture, um, music, and an awesome message from Pastor Brad as he closes out our series, uh, Life of the Wilderness. So, are you new to Timberlake? Is this one of your first times joining us? Or maybe you haven't had a chance to visit us uh, in person, but we're thankful to have you here online. So, we want to be able to connect with you this morning. Yes, yeah, so we have a free gift um, that we really would like to give to you. Um, all you have to do, there's a link in the comment section and in the post. Uh, it says connect card. Fill that out um, and uh, yeah, we'll send you a free gift and we'll be able to connect with you and help you get to know us at Timberlake a little more. So later on in the service, uh, we'll have a time of giving, a time of offering, uh, where we uh, we are a part of our mission to reach, feed, and release people with the hands of the of Jesus. How can I do that? So ways that you can do that, you can go online and set up an auto draft every month. It automatically takes that um, and gives that directly to the church for you. Uh, you can also do a text to give. You can also do the good old mail it into the church. So we have lots of people uh, using all those options to give here in Timberlake to fulfill our mission of reach, feeding, and releasing people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So starting next week and for the entire month of July, we are beginning a new sermon series called Covenant Relationships. Yeah, so we're going to talk about um, the nature of God's relationship uh, with us is a covenant. Um, it's forever. Uh, it's not a small time. It's not like a contract. Um, and so yeah, we're going to talk about how we have a tendency to uh, break those covenants with our other relationships as well, even with God. And so yeah, just join us next week, um, starting next week, as we begin that new series, Covenant Relationships. So, believe it or not, this is week 16 of joining each other online. So, you've heard this stuff probably over and over again for how to watch the service. So, let's talk about it. Yeah, so distraction free. Put your phones away unless you're watching on your phone. But uh, cast it on your TV. Um, what else? Your devices, the iPads, yeah, yeah. You know, telephones, anything like that. But obviously, your biggest device is your best. Yeah, yeah. So, and then um, gather your family in one place. You know, don't watch separately. Um, it's easy to, you know, to do it separately if you have, like, older people, you know, older kids that can just watch. You know, bring everybody together, sit on the couch, maybe the table. The table's a great place to commune together and watch church. Have your coffee, yeah. hot tea, whatever you want, yep. and sit together and enjoy worship. And what's the most important thing for engaging in worship, you know? Uh, listening to the message. Sing along, like, oh, right? get involved, yeah. like, this is... Participatory, yeah. This isn't a spectator sport, y'all. Like, let's sing together, let's let's pray together, let's really dive in together uh, this morning for worship. There's a lot of singing in our house. Oh yeah, we so love to sing, not just on Sunday morning. Every day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, remember, cast your big screen, put the devices away, gather everybody together, and sing along. Let's have some fun this morning. So yeah, so uh, we are sad that VBS uh, in person has been canceled. Um, but that means we get to do VBS online this year. Uh, so we're excited about that. Tell us a little bit more about it. So we are going to pioneer through uh, a virtual VBS here at Timberlake. Uh, and if you've been here in the past for VBS, you know that VBS is huge and awesome and so fun. And we're going to try to take that into a virtual setting uh, starting the first week of August. Yep. Um, you should be on the lookout for an email uh, tomorrow from uh, Ms. Erin and our communications team letting you know more information about how to sign up and get your information for virtual VBS. Uh, that information will also be posted on all of your Timberlake communications as well. So I uh, hope you get excited and ready to join us for our first ever virtual VBS. Yeah, so we know that, you know, social media and Facebook, you get a lot of stuff. There's some good stuff, there's some bad stuff. One of my favorite places to go on social media is our Facebook. Uh, what's the name of it? 
Timberlake Church and online community. Yeah, what do you like about it? I love that people can just post and comment away, and it's all people that you're seeing here in the building on Sunday morning um, when we're able to be together, and we're able just to chat. You can lift up prayer requests, you can talk about um, different needs, you can share jokes, um, yes. different little just fun commenting posts. Uh, the most recent was... Uh, the, what would you do? Uh, was it March 8th? Was there a yeah, so the, yeah, the last post that we posted uh, today when we record this is uh, what was, if you knew that March 8th was the last Sunday you would be in the building for church, what would, well, you, do? What would you do differently? So, yeah. Lots of fun things uh, to talk about and do uh, in the Timberlake online community. Um, and we just hope that you'll join that. Uh, and have fun and visit with others here in our church um, in a virtual way. Yeah. It's in the link. So after the service, we have like a Facebook group on our Timberlake online community uh, group that you can join in and have like a little lobby chit chat kind of time. Yeah, so our pastors and our leaders will be there to uh, to just talk and have fun, just greet one another um, virtually, of course. Uh, yeah, so it's in the Facebook group. It'll be around 10.45ish uh, this morning. So yeah, join that uh, so you can be involved. Hang out, have fun, and you can talk about the things we normally talk about if we were in person. So this is kind of your after-service hangout opportunity just virtually. Best ways you can like help spread the gospel right now in this online community is by sharing the stream, right? And Gotta share. That. So somewhere here on your feed, you have a little share button. Hit share. <laughs> tell your friends uh, to join us for church this morning. And even if they're not watching it right now, they might catch up and watch it later. So it's super exactly. important uh, to share the stream and invite others to join in the message here at Timberlake. A few years ago, I read an article that compared sitting to smoking, and it really hit me hard uh, because I can't really imagine smoking cigarettes on a regular basis, but um, I do sit a lot. I sit at work, I sit at home, and I suppose a few centuries ago when we were all hunter-gatherers or even farmers, we didn't have this problem because you had to move. We had to move just as part of our, our daily living, but now we have office jobs, we have desk jobs, and so, man, it is easy for me to go a whole day and just sit if I'm not intentional. So I wanna encourage you to move your body, do whatever works for you. Of course, the best exercise is the one that you will do. So whether it's walking or running or swimming or push-ups or sit-ups or whatever it is, uh, find a friend and get your body going. guys we love you thanks again for joining us yeah we hope you enjoy today's service and we hope we're able to see you again real soon here at Timberland.
morning, friends, and welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Brad, and we are Timberlake United Methodist Church. This is the day that the Lord has made, and so let us rejoice and be glad in it. I hope that wherever you are right now, you are rejoicing in the gifts of God. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. It is good to be together and to give our praises to God, to give our offering and our thanks, and celebrate what God is doing in our lives. Friends, if you're like me, I know some of us are eager to get back on campus. We are actively working on that day by day and week by week right now. And we're excited to be able to share the plan with you very soon and to give you a projected date uh, that we will be able to get back on campus for worship. And so we are working on that now. I'm gonna ask you to pre please pray for us as we do that. Pray for me as a leader and as your pastor so that uh, we can discern these things together. But I want you to understand this, friends, even though we may not have chosen this quarantine time, God is absolutely using it. Uh, there is nothing and no one beyond the redemption of God and we see the fruit of the power of the Holy Spirit moving in our community and in the world. We are reaching hundreds of people through our online ministry that we otherwise would not have reached. People who would never darken the doorway of our church building have been connecting with us through the ministry of Timberlake Online. And so I want you to see and know that God is still at work. We may be impatient, we may be frustrated, we may be eager to get back on campus, but God, you better believe God is using this time to do God's work in the world, to reach people in the name of Jesus. And I'm so glad that we can be a part of that as well. If you're new to Timberlake, thank you for joining us. We're so glad you're here. You're also invited to join us on campus when we get back to campus for worship. In the meantime, friends, let us give our minds and our hearts and our attention as we worship God together. Please join me as we say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Phil McCarran came and had a music ministry that he offered to the church. And it was one where a group of us, the six that will soon sing, went into the hospitals and sang for patients and people that we knew that were struggling with health issues. We believe that music heals. And so we sing for you today, hoping that it will help to heal your souls. Timberlake family, this is Pastor Matt, and this is the time where we're able to unite our hearts together as one as we come before the Lord in prayer. I invite you now to pray with me as we seek the heart of God together. Let us pray. Father God, you are good. You are exalted above all things. God, we join our hearts with yours as we ask that you would make us one with you. 
We know that you are good. We know that you are powerful and we know that you are full of love and mercy. God, we ask that you would bring our hearts closer to yours in those areas, that our heartbeat would match your heartbeat, that your love would be a banner over us, that you would be Jehovah Nisi. God, we ask that you would show us the depth of your blessing. Lord, we come with hearts that have run away from you, with sin in our lives that prevents us from fully seeing who you are. And so God, we ask that we would be forgiven of our sins and we know that you are our great forgiver. And so God, we admit that we have fallen short in many areas and we ask that we would come back to know the fullness of who you are in all the things that you call us to. God, we ask that you would show us the way in the wilderness, that you would provide for us a pathway to your light, to your love, to your peace, to your goodness. God, in many ways we have wandered, in many ways we have gone astray, but God, you continue to show forth your light to guide us, fire by night, smoke, by day and so God we journey with you and we ask that our hearts would find you that our lives would match your worth that our lives would be an echo of who you are that your love would shine into the depths of the sin and the brokenness and the weariness of our world for God we know that you alone are the answer to all the world's problems Jesus in you is true peace and you is true love and you is true comfort and you is true safety there is no other place that we can find any of these things in except in your loving arms and so jesus we ask that you would draw us closer into you that you would allow us to know you in deeper ways that you would remove those things that would hinder us from true and deep relationship with you God, we ask for a hunger for your word that we would look to it for our guidance, that we would know that all the answers are found within the scriptures and that in that, Lord, we would build a deep relationship with you. God, we ask and we pray for those in our community who feel isolated, those who feel downtrodden, those who feel that justice has not come to them. And we ask that we would be those who are peacemakers. God, we ask that you would show us and enlighten us and give us the mind of Christ so that we might have the wisdom to navigate all the things that are going on in our world that seem to want to steal, kill, and destroy. And so, God, we know that the father of lies, that the devil lurks around looking for people to devour like a hungry lion. But, God, you have provided an abundant life for us as we know in John 10, 10, that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So all things that look to steal, to kill, and to destroy are from him, the father of lies. There is no hope in doing those things. But Lord, your word goes on to say that you have brought life and life abundantly through Jesus Christ. And so, God, we want this abundant life. We ask for this abundant life. We ask that we would be ambassadors of abundance, not of thievery, not of tearing down, but of building up. So God, give us ways, give us understanding on what it looks like to build up. Father, the greatest example is through Jesus. He came and lived a perfect life in which we want to model ourselves by his grace, by his goodness, by his actions. He was a healer, a revealer of your grace, of your goodness. And so Lord, Allow us to heal. Allow us to be those who reach out with loving arms and care, with empathy and with sympathy, and allow us to see the greatness and the goodness and the power of your kingdom come and your will be done. God, as Jesus lived a perfect life, he also died a perfect death in which we are able to come into communion with you, God, our Father. Lord, that perfect gift that that perfect sacrifice on the cross, through his blood we are now healed and we are able to be released into this world 
to show the abundance of your heart, your goodness, your grace, your peace, your perfection. And there is a perfect thing also that Jesus taught us, and that was how to pray. And so, God, I ask that you would use the words of our lips and the meditations of our heart as we approach you with the prayer that he taught us, and that we would show a world who is in dire need of your goodness just how good you are. So let us unite our voices together as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Erin Colbert, and I'm the Children's Ministry Director here at Timberlake. And this is our children's message. Psalm 72, 19 said, Blessed be his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. I have a few questions for you this morning, my friends. Where do you see a reflection? Do you see reflections in mirrors or shiny surfaces or water? Have you ever thought, how are all of these reflections of an image of something else? Now, I have another big question for you. How would you define the word glorious? Now, think about that for a moment. Glorious has the word glory in it. Do you know what the word glory means? The word glory means a thing that is so beautiful or distinctive. In other words, it's very similar to glory is praise or worship or thanksgiving. God is glorious. Now I'm gonna share another story from the Bible that explains what it means that God is glorious. And the story is from Exodus. While the people of Israel were out in the wilderness between Egypt and the Promised Land, Moses went up to a big mountain and met with God. And while he was at that mountain, the people began to worry. And they made a statue of a golden calf and they were worshiping it. Moses came down from the mountain and when he saw what he was doing, he destroyed the idol. He broke the stone with the Ten Commandments that God had just given him. Moses went back to God and he asked God to forgive the people of Israel of their sin and even offered to take the punishment for their sins upon himself. But God said that their sin would have to be punished. God told Moses that he would no longer lead them to the promised land because of their rebellion and said that if he stayed with them, he might even destroy them. When Moses told the people what God said, they were very sad and they repented of worshiping of a golden calf, Moses went back to God and reminded him that he had always said that they were the special people of God. And God agreed that he would lead them still to the promised land as he had originally promised. Moses asked God to show him his glory. God told Moses that no one could see his face, but that he could hide from the side of a rock and God would pass by. After God passed Moses, Moses worshiped God on that mountain. And while Moses was on that mountain, God gave him the Ten Commandments again, as well with more rules and laws. When Moses came down from the mountain, his face was shining because he had been in the presence of God and he had seen the glory of God. Glorious equals full of glory, praise, honor, and distinction. Moses asked God to see his glory. He wanted to see the greatness of God. God passed him by and met him. Just from spending a little time with God, Moses' face was changed because he had been in the presence of the glory of God. Now back to our verse from the beginning, Psalm 72. The truth is that God is glorious. In the story that we just heard about Moses and his face shining bright after he had been in the presence of God, Moses was reflecting the glory of God. We're not actually a mirror. 
when people look into a mirror, but the reflections of what we look like can still shine through in our face. In a similar way, after Moses had been in God's presence, he was reflecting God's glory. Do you know what was the greatest display of God's glory? It was when Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead. By dying on the cross, Jesus displayed God's mercy and grace for all to see. That gave God great glory and Moses tried to take the punishment, but he couldn't because he was a sinner. But Jesus did what Moses could never do. He lived a sinless, sinless life and he gave it all up for us. Now that's glorious. In the story of Exodus, God showed his glory and greatness to Moses, and Moses was never the same. And when we understand the glory of God and how God gave his only son to rescue us from our sin, we will never be the same either. We can't help but be in the presence of God and know what he's done to rescue us. And that will change our lives forever. Schools have been closed for the past three months, but Timberlake Student Food Bank Ministry has been going strong. Through your generous Christmas Eve offerings and our partnership with Parkview Community Mission, Timberlake's missions team has coordinated distribution of 150 bags per week to area students this spring. Our current summer distribution program is 60 bags per week. Here's some information about Parkview's Food for Thought program and Timberlake's ministry to get food to students in the greater Lynchburg area. We're at Parkview Community Mission this morning. Yes. So how many bags are y'all packing each week? So we're packing uh, between 900 and 1,000. Wow. Quite an operation you got here. So where, where does all this food come from? large quantities there. Um, we also rely uh, heavily on, on uh, donations for snacks uh, from local businesses and volunteer partners who uh, want to either host a food drive for us or some folks just kind of pick up an extra package of crackers at Sam's and next time they drive through here they drop it off the door. We have four rotating menus throughout the month. Cool. Um, so each section represents what would be in one bag. So right. So this section right this here. This section here is is one. It's one. So mac and cheese is on the menu. Yes, each week. You can count on it. Yep, they can count on that mac and cheese. Right. It's favorite. Yeah, wonderful. Looks like we have another pickup going on here this morning. Oh yeah, looks like Mike West out there. Another Timberlake driver. There's Mike. All right, buddy. Good to see you this morning. The hardest part of this whole job is putting on the gloves. Getting the glove. Getting gloved up. There you go. All right, he's ready. For me, anyway. Yeah. So, Mike, where are you going this morning? I'm going to leave Road Elementary School. Yes, sir. And how many bags do we have for Leesville? Forty-five, I think. Uh huh. Yep. Wonderful. So other drivers we've got, uh, this is uh, Mike West, of course, but uh, Bob Powell's been driving for Leesville Road, Steve and Kim Tibbs, Travis Parson, Pam Comfer, she drives for uh, Cornerstone Learning Center, Harvest Outreach. We do that delivery at the, uh, at the church, and um, uh, Alice Purtle is, uh, is starting to help her there. Um, we've got uh, Dave Hamlet that's been driving as well, so lots of folks. Lots of folks that are uh, doing some good work. Mike, so how'd, how'd you get started with this? With this? Yeah. Uh, I saw the, uh, the uh, request for volunteers and signed up online and Matt sent me an acknowledgement and uh, we got going. Yeah. yeah. I enjoy doing it and it's uh, helping to fulfill the mission of our church. So I just, I've always enjoyed doing this type of thing. Yeah, man. Reach, feed, and release. That's correct. There you go. That's right. Yeah. In the spring semester, Timberlake provided 2,200 bags of food for students from food insecure homes. 
This summer we are on track for another 800 bags and then hope to ramp up the program in the fall, helping additional students in our current schools and expanding into other schools as well. Our mission at Timberlake is to reach, feed, and release people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Friends, when you give financially, you support the mission of Timberlake United Methodist Church to reach, feed, and release people to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you for your generosity. It makes all the difference in our ability to bless people in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you to give today, to give this week, to give generously. Three ways you can give. You can mail in your check to the church. You can give through the website or you can give through text to give. Thank you, thank you, thank you from me and from God for your gifts. Change your glory. 
Welcome to the last Sunday in our series. It's called Life in the Wilderness, and this is the message portion of the service, friends, when we read the scriptures and interpret them to one another and listen for what the Holy Spirit of God is saying to us, the people of God, to the church. We've been preaching through the book of Exodus and examining the similarities between God's people Israel in the wilderness outside of Egypt and the church, God's people, the church, in the wilderness that is the year 2020. Now, the book of Exodus is mainly about two things. Remember, rescue and relationship. Rescue and relationship. After God rescued the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, God moved to form a covenant relationship with them. Now, last week we talked about one important sign of the covenant, that is the Ten Commandments. So God gave Israel the Ten Commandments. Uh, But also God gave many chapters of related laws that would help form them into a community. Uh, God gave laws about personal injury, uh, about property, about Sabbath keeping. Uh, And then beginning in chapter 25 and going all the way to chapter 31, we get instructions for worship. Seven chapters of instructions for worship. And God gives commands about all kinds of things related to worship. How to make the offering, uh, how to build the Ark of the Covenant, which is that, that box covered in gold that holds the Ten Commandments how to construct the tabernacle. There's instructions for the mercy seat, uh, for the bread of the presence, for the lampstand, the sanctuary, the curtain, the altar, and the priests, how to ordain the priests, what the priests are supposed to wear. Uh, There's even instructions for the oil, for the lamp. It's supposed to be pure olive oil. It's supposed to be burned every evening. And as you read through these seven chapters, it could be easy to get caught up in the details. So I want you to remember the point, okay? What's the point of seven chapters of instructions on worship. Well, it's two things. First, worship begins with the offering. Worship begins with offering. For ancient Israel, for the people of God, the most fundamental element of worship is offering. And it starts there in chapter 25, verse 1, very detailed instruction on how the offering is supposed to go. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to make for me an offering. You shall receive from them gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and crimson yarns and fine linen, goat's hair, tanned ram's skins, fine leather, acacia wood, oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, and the list goes on and on. For God and for Israel, worship begins with an offering. As we think about our own practice of worship, it's good to remember the importance of offering our financial gifts, uh, but also offering our hearts, right, and our minds. Uh, The essence of worship is offering ourselves to God, not just the money, right, but offering our whole lives, offering ourselves to God. 
Now, the second point of seven chapters of instructions for worship is this. God really cares about worship. God really, really cares about our worship. God cares deeply about it, about how we do it, about who shows up, about the attitude with which we approach God's throne. Worship really matters to God, and if it matters that much to God, guess what? It should matter that much to us. Remember back to the burning bush. God came to Moses and said, look, you're going to go confront the Pharaoh. And Moses protested a little, right? He said, I, I don't know if I can do that. Well, give me a sign, Lord. Give me some reassurance. And look at verse 11 from chapter 3. Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Worship is a sign of freedom. Worship is a sign of freedom. How is that? Well, slaves can't worship as they choose, can they? No. Slaves are commanded to worship their, their masters, to worship the Pharaoh, to worship the king. Only free people can worship the one true God. Now, one of the things that you and I celebrate about America is freedom of religion. Every person who lives in the United States is free to worship as they feel led to do so. But, but the downside of that, there's a downside, right? The downside is sometimes we take this freedom for granted because it doesn't feel to us like there's very much at stake. But when you read what Exodus says about worship, you realize everything is at stake. Worship is a sign of our freedom. Worship is at the center of our relationship with God. Now think about that with me in light of uh, some of our current attitudes about worship. And let's be honest with ourselves and with God for just a moment. We can be apathetic at times, can't we? Uh, we can be somewhat nonchalant about worship and we think, eh, whatever, you know, I, I can take it or leave it. And maybe we worship one Sunday and then maybe we skip it the next or maybe we skip it several Sundays in a row, depending on if we feel like it or not. And even when we do show up, we are tempted to be more concerned with our own entertainment than we are with what God wants from us. And so I hear church people saying things like, you know, this music just really isn't my style, or I'm not sure if I even liked the sermon today. I, I don't know if I got anything out of the service today. Friends, there are many acceptable styles for worship. It can be casual or formal. It can be modern or traditional. Uh, but if you are a follower of Jesus, you cannot just take it or leave it. Worship is essential. Worship is essential. And it doesn't really matter what I want or what you want. It really only matters what God wants. So, lesson number one from the last part of Exodus in these last chapters that we're covering today. Lesson number one is God really cares about our worship. Lesson number two. God is leading his people to the promised land. So we pick up the story in chapter 33. Remember, uh, we started back in oh, chapter 25, and we talked about the importance of worship. And for seven chapters, the, the details go on and on. And now here we are in chapter 33, starting with verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Go, leave this place, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, and go to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey. So God commands Moses and the Israelites to leave Mount Sinai and to head for the land of Canaan, which was promised to their ancestors. Now, considering Israel's disobedience and their idolatry, this is no small thing. It means God is forgiving them. It means God still wants a relationship with them. It means God is making a future for them in spite of their failure. And this is why we call it the promised 
land, right? Because it's the land that was promised to their ancestors. This was part of God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah to make of them a great nation. And what do you need to make a great nation? Well, you need two things at least. You need people and you need land. You need people and land. Now, some of us grew up in Sunday school and we learned a song that goes, Father Abraham had many sons and many sons had Father Abraham. Sing along. I'm one of them and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. And then for some reason you start moving your right arm and then your left arm. I don't understand that part of the song. But <laughs> this is a song about covenant, right? This is a song that, that reflects the first promise of God to Abraham, which is descendants, people. Uh, God said to Abraham and Sarah, I'll make of you a great nation. You will have many, many descendants, as, as many as there are stars in heaven. So that's the first promise. The second part of the promise is land. God promises them a place to live. In other words, a home. I will give you a home. Remember where uh, Moses' people have been living for a long, long time. In Egypt, in a place that is not their home. In, in, a, in a place of slavery and of oppression. Think for a minute about the importance of having a home. Okay, And if, if that does not immediately resonate with you, uh, ask someone who has lived without a home. Ask someone who has been away from home for a long time. Okay, Home is a welcome gift. The promised land is a welcome gift for people who have been without a home. And the way that they will know that it is the promised land is that it will be flowing with milk and honey. Now, what does that mean? Flowing with milk and and honey. Okay, so this is metaphorical. Now it's literal also. There'll be milk there and honey, but it's also metaphorical. It points to the fertility of the land. Any farmer, any gardener can tell you that the land makes all the difference. Land with rich soil, with abundant sunshine, with soft rain produces abundance and abundance of crop and abundance of livestock and of good things. So the milk and honey is there as a sign of fertility of the land. The Bible also says that the milk and honey is flowing. Now, flowing means there's energy, right? There's power. It means there's a source from which these blessings are coming, and it does not run out. It goes on and on. It flows. What does milk stand for? Well, milk is the baby's first nutrition from its mother, right? And so like a mother, God feeds God's children with good things. And what does the honey stand for? Honey is sweet, isn't it? Honey reminds us of the sweetness of God's love and of God's saving power for God's people. And so just as milk and honey are, are metaphorical in that way, the promised land is also, it's more than just a, a geographical location in the ancient Near East. The promised land is also a reminder of heaven of that eternal home that is promised by God to his people. And just like Canaan, in heaven there will be a feast of milk and honey that never runs out, provided by our loving God and full of freedom and peace found only in God's eternal home. The way the Israelites longed for and looked forward to the promised land is the same way that we long for and look forward to heaven. So lesson number two from this part of Exodus is God is leading his people to the promised land. Which brings us to lesson number three. Lesson number three is this. God is on the move. God is on the move. So we come to the end of the story of Exodus. And here are the last three verses from the whole book. This is in chapter 40, verses 36 and 37 and 38. It says this. Whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the Israelites would set out on each stage of their journey. But if the cloud was not taken up, they did not set out until the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and the fire was in the cloud by night, before the eyes of all the house of Israel at each stage of their journey. Okay, let's talk about the tabernacle. The tabernacle, what was that? The tabernacle was simply a 
tent. Now, it's a very elaborate tent with a lot of particulars. Remember, all the particulars about worship. There's a lot of details about the tabernacle in the book of Exodus. But at its most basic level, it is a tent. And the tent is a place where God would dwell and where the Israelites could meet with God for worship, to, to make their offerings. The tabernacle was a tent. And uh, it is a dwelling place for God and the location of their relationship with God through worship. Now, why a tent? Why a tent? Well, remember where they are. They're in the desert, right? They're still far from home. They're moving from place to place. And, of course, the essence of a tent is that it's what? Mobile. The essence of a tent is that it's mobile. When you go camping, you can set up your tent for one night or for one week or whatever you want. And then when you're finished, you pack it up and you move on. Okay, so the fact that the Lord is dwelling in a tent means that God is on the move. And the fact that Israel worships in a tent means that they are a people on the move. Friends, get this. God is not limited to a building. God is not limited to a building, and neither are God's people limited to a building. Now, I cannot think of a better message for God's people at a time when we have been scattered away from the building, into our homes, into the community, sent out, and yet we are still called to be the church, aren't we? Whether we have the building or not, we are the church. It's interesting, when you look at the history of Christianity, uh, people have continually, the people of God have, have continually tried to capture God inside of buildings right? All the while, God is breaking out of buildings and moving out into the world. And so Christian people of every century have said to themselves, you know, if we, if we could just build a big enough cathedral, you know, if, if we could just construct the right kind of church building, you know, if we could just make a nice sanctuary, then we could meet God there. And God says, don't you see, I, I'm moving out into the world. God says, yes, come and gather, but then we go. We go outside the walls into the world. It's ironic, perhaps, that in the places and times in the history of the church, when the movement of God's people grew the fastest and made the most impact, those were the places and times when the church did not even have a building. Right? We think of our building as essential, and it is an incredible blessing. I'm not sure what we would do without it. We'd have to rethink a lot of things, wouldn't we? But keep in mind that in the times and places when the church had no building, those were the times and places when the church has seen tremendous fruit by the power of the Holy Spirit. So think about the first century church where they did not uh, meet in any buildings. Now, they met in homes, but they didn't have one central location in the community. It was illegal to be a follower of Jesus. Think about in China right now in our lifetime where it is, uh, there is oppression against people of faith and where the underground church meets without church buildings and yet the church is growing like crazy. It's growing like crazy right now in China. It grew like crazy in the first century as the followers of Jesus were spreading the gospel out into the world. So, we're eager to get back on campus uh, to see our friends and to gather for life groups and to gather for worship. I am too. But remember, friends, when we gather, the purpose is not to stay there forever. It is to be refueled and refreshed as we go back out into the world. We have a lot to learn from the people of the Exodus. We have a lot to learn from the God of the Exodus. Remember, Exodus means exit. Exit. You knew that, right? Exodus means exit. It means going out. It means leaving one place and going on to the next. God is on the move, and God's people are on the move. Now, God's people may not always understand exactly what's happening, right? Uh, we may not always understand why it's happening or where we are going next, but there are two things that we can know for sure. One is we're not going back. We're not going back. When the Israelites complained about being tired and hungry, they demanded to Moses, take us back to Egypt. 
And I, it seems to me there's, there's part of each of us that wants to go back. We want to go back to Egypt, right? We want to go back to the good old days. And they may not have been perfect, but at least it was predictable. But friends, going back is not an option for God's people. God is not going backwards. God is going forwards. God has rescued us from the old life, from our old sin, and called us and leading us to go forward. So we're not going back. Second, we're not going alone. We're not going alone. The cloud of God's presence moved ahead of and with the Israelites. And God is with us in the person and the ministry of Jesus Christ. The Spirit is moving in the church right now. The Spirit of God is moving in your heart and in my heart. God is with us. I'm going to leave you with two last things today, friends. I wonder if you know that before there was such a thing as a group of people called Christians, the followers of Jesus in the early church were known as people of the way. People of the way. In other words, they were people on a journey. They were people going somewhere, growing in their faith, following Jesus and the gospel of Christ out into the world. They were a people on the move, on their way to the promised land, centered in the worship that they shared, the worship of the living God. And so I'm so proud to be one of the pastors at a church where we are serious about being released out into the world in the name of Jesus. When I first came to Timberlake four years ago this summer, One of the mental images that God gave me for who we are, God showed me and said that we are like horses at the starting gate. And I don't know if you've ever uh, thought of yourself that way, but this is certainly meant as a compliment. We're like horses at the starting gate. And you know, have you ever seen a horse race? The horses are so excited to run, they can hardly stand it. And all they need is someone to open the gate. And so that's what God is doing for us, friends. God is opening the gate by the power of the Spirit and saying, run, go, you can do it. Go out into the world in the name of Jesus to reach, feed, and release people. Friends, may God release all of us for the ministry of Christ this day and forever. Amen.
So we've come to the end of Exodus and the end of our series called Life in the Wilderness. Go back with me in your mind to part of how the story started. When Pharaoh issued an order for the elimination of all the Hebrew baby boys and Moses' mother, her name's Jochebed, she took Moses and she laid him in a basket and put him in the river. And I want you to think for a moment about how difficult that must have been for her. This is her, her treasured possession, her child, her own flesh and blood. She must have loved him more than life itself, and yet she had to let him go. Friends, sometimes God calls us to let go of things we hold dear. Have you noticed that? To follow Jesus means we have to let go of a lot of things that we hold dear. Our opinions, our preferences, our habits, our sins, even people we love. But notice that the story of Moses doesn't end there, right? That's a beginning, not an ending, because as he is found in the river by the daughter of the Pharaoh, God uses Moses for the rest of his life for God's own purposes. And so in the paradoxical way of God's kingdom, that which is released for God's use is returned to us, multiplied over and over by the grace of God. Friends, I want to invite you today to let go and to let God and to let Jesus show us the way forward together into God's future. Friends, go in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.